Hello everyone and welcome to Eddie Searles Clinics. I am Dr. Gunjan Desai and today we are going to complete our series on inguinal hernia anatomy. We have seen the anterior as well as the posterior aspect of anatomy and the most important laparoscopic inguinal hernia anatomy by Furtado. So in this video we will see some commonly asked questions. Look at the femoral hernia anatomy and a summary of the most important concepts and questions that we have covered in this series and the most commonly asked questions in the last four to five years. So one of the important questions that is asked is the myopectineal orifice of Frucor. We have seen a lot of the boundaries of myopectineal orifice, but, but just to summarize it here, myopectineal orifice of Frucor is the area where all the hernias occur that is the direct, indirect and the femoral and this is the area that has to be covered by mesh. Remember that it is not the area where the tackers are to be applied. Now we have seen the Furtado's classification and you know where are the areas where the tackers are not to be applied. Myopectinal orifice of Frucord is the area which should be covered by mesh. Okay, Its superior boundary is the arch of internal oblique and transversus abdominis muscle. Lateral boundary is the iliopsoas muscle. Medial boundary is the lateral border of rectus and the anterior lamina of rectus sheath. Inferiorly, it has the pectern pubis with the iliopectineal ligament and posterior surface is the fascia transversalis. So that is entirely the myopectineal orifice of Frucot. And if you see the boundaries, it is somehow easier to remember if you can imagine supraingoinal triangles the medial border is the medial border of supraingoinal triangle and the lateral border is the lateral limit of dissection so medial and lateral are easy to remember superior surface is same as the roof of the inguinal canal as is the posterior surface so that is how myopectinal orifice of Foucault can be remembered other very important question that is commonly asked is corona mortis. So what is corona mortis? It is Latin for crown of death. You can see the common iliac artery which has two branches external iliac artery and internal iliac artery. Internal iliac artery divides into anterior and posterior and the anterior branch of internal iliac artery gives rise to obturator artery. We will see internal iliac artery in a separate video because it has a lot of branches of significance. But for corona mortis, you need to understand how the crown is formed. Very commonly asked question. Basically, it's a communication between external and internal iliac artery through the obturator branch. Okay, So the obturator branch is a branch of anterior division of internal iliac artery. An inferior epigastric artery is a branch of the external iliac artery. And sometimes there can be a big communication between inferior epigastric artery and obturator artery through the anterior or posterior division of obturator vessels or through the accessory obturator vessels. So this is important to remember because this communication can be along the superior surface of pubic ramus and it can cause massive bleeding if you are doing a femoral hernia repair or mesh placement in that area and not aware that there is a big vessel there. It can be an artery or a vein for here for diagram purpose we are showing it in the artery but even a vein similar to the arterial anatomy can be present. So that is corona mortis. Now going to femoral canal and ring, you have already seen this concept, the inguinal canal in the supraingoinal compartment and the femoral canal in the infrainguinal compartment. The black structure here is the femoral canal and its superior aspect or opening is the femoral ring. If you just remember this diagram, it will be very easy to remember the boundaries of the femoral ring. That is the lacunal ligament, the cooper ligament and the inguinal ligament and laterally the femoral vein. If we see the femoral canal and ring, just to summarize, the anterior femoral sheath is formed by fascia transversalis and the posterior is formed by fascia iliaca. And that is why if you see the three-dimensional depiction here, the femoral canal is shown posterior to inguinal 
canal because the posterior wall of inguinal canal forms the anterior sheath of femoral canal. Okay. Femoral now is outside the femoral sheath. Boundaries of the femoral ring, we have already seen anterior is the inguinal ligament, posterior is the cooper or the iliopectineal ligament, pubic bone and pectineal fascia. Medial is the lacunal ligament and lateral is a septum that separates it from the femoral vein. Now coming to the most important aspects of hernia anatomy that you need to remember for life, for your exams. Very commonly asked questions. There are at least 15 questions in this slide. What is arcuate line? It is also known as what linea semicircularis is what ligamentum teres is what falciform ligament is continuation of ligamentum teres. Medial umbilical ligament is obliterated umbilical artery. Ligamentum teres is obliterated umbilical vein. Medial fossa, lateral fossa, Lateral umbilical ligament consists of inferior epigastric artery. All these are commonly asked questions. So remember this diagram very well. Going to the groin anatomy, the inguinal canal boundaries are one of the most commonly asked questions. Remember this video, the three-dimensional concept of inguinal canal. And if you need a mnemonic, M-A-L-T is the mnemonic muscle aponeurosis ligament and tendon transversalis in counterclock direction. One of the most important concepts of hernia anatomy is the furtado anatomy for laparoscopic hernia. Again, at least 10 to 15 questions, space of Redzias, Bogros and Dalak, triangle of doom, triangle of pain. Logically understand this concept, then all these questions will become very easy. The supraingoinal triangles and the infraingoinal triangles. Ligaments are derived from some structures in the upper abdomen. That is very commonly asked. So the name and the derivations are summarized in this slide. Inguinal ligament is also known as Poppert's ligament. It is derived from external oblique aponeurosis. Cooper ligament is also known as pectineal ligament. Lacunal ligament is also known as gimbernet ligament. Iliopubic tract is derived from fascia transversalis thickening and it is in laparoscopic anatomy a posterior reflection of inguinal ligament. External spermatic fascia is external oblique aponeurosis. Premastric fascia is internal oblique and transversus abdomen is aponeurosis and internal spermatic fascia is fascia transversalis. Mid inguinal point and midpoint of inguinal ligament are again commonly asked. Mid inguinal point is between pubic symphysis and ASIS. Midpoint of inguinal ligament is between pubic tubercle and ASIS. So that is lateral to mid inguinal point. Mid inguinal point is where we palpate the femoral artery pulsation. Midpoint of inguinal ligament is the location for deep inguinal ring. So we have covered all the points in inguinal hernia anatomy that are routinely asked. The concepts that are very important to understand this anatomy are discussed here. Go through this series once or twice again and you will learn this anatomy for your life. Our website has all the videos that we post. So if you have missed any videos, we have around 250 videos now. We are also coming up with shorts for rapid revision. So that is something to look forward to and recommended books are also there. Thank you.